Let's take a look at uh, number five. So number five we have, we're talking about uh, cooling. And one of the things that we you will probably already realize is there's a lot of kind of weird archaic terms that get used uh, through these processes. Um, one would be a ton of cooling. Like a ton of cooling is kind of an odd term. Like the hell does that mean? Like a ton of cooling? Um, well, so technically, I think originally a ton of cooling is uh, the heat of fusion. So this is um, when ice turns to uh, water. Uh, there's a, a there's a process that, that uh, happens, and it's the amount of energy it takes for that process to happen for one ton of ice to turn to water. Um, I think it's not even quite technically that. I think it's like this is a short ton and a long ton. It's all these kind of simple technical slight variations. I wouldn't worry about it. The gist of it is there's a ton of ice somewhere. It turns to water. That's the amount of energy. It's completely useless to you because like what the hell does that mean? Um, the only thing that's useful for us is that it gives us a way to quantify uh, how big a, a cooling load that we're going to use for our systems. Um, an actual number that's probably worth remembering is that a ton of cooling is equal to 12,000 BTUH. That's one that just might show up. It's probably worth remembering that one. Um, so the, the question actually is, which range is most reasonable for estimating cooling loads for buildings located in the continental US? A, 200 square feet per ton to 600 square feet uh, per ton. B, 500 to 1,000. C, 12,000 to 24,000. D, 100 square feet per ton to 200 square feet per ton. So this is really just seeing if you kind of know the general range uh, of uh, how much cooling generally happens in, in a typical building. Um, if you haven't dealt with this kind of system, you probably haven't come across it before. You haven't probably thought about it in this way. This is just one of those one of those numbers. It's worth kind of remembering. Um, the one the number that I always use is about 300 square feet uh, per ton of cooling. So the range A is the right answer. The range would be 200 to 600. So you might think that's kind of a big range. What's up with that, right? Well, if you start thinking about it, uh, let's say we're talking about uh, a uh, you know thousand square feet of space and it's uh, uh, just like a house like a simple straightforward house um, small small house well that's not there's not a lot of people in there right there's not a lot of activities this is showers and cooking and people walking around stuff but it's not a big number of people right so I'm not gonna have a giant uh, uh, heating uh, I'm not gonna have a giant cooling load generated by the number of people. And let's say there's a lot of trees and so I get pretty good shade. So I'm not gonna have a giant uh, cooling load generated by solar radiation, right? Um, okay, so I could probably go up to the upper end of, the, of this range and say, so 600 square feet uh, uh, per ton, 1,000 square feet, so it's a ton and a half to two tons, somewhere in that range. That's gonna be plenty for that. All right, let's say that same 1,000 square feet is uh, a seminar space, and sometimes that thing has uh, 80 people in it. Um, well, that's going to be a totally different cooling load, right? And I would definitely go way down towards the 200 square feet. Uh, so that would end up being, say, five tons of cooling. So the same square footage, right, but different use, different cooling needs, uh, I would then sort of range it back and forth within that range. So there's nothing sacred about these numbers. They're just sort of the general kind of rule of thumb numbers that most people would kind of have um, at their fingertips uh, when they talk about these things. I always just remember 300 personally, and I just use that um, and then let some engineer figure it out for me. Uh, but uh, th that always gets me in the ballpark. Um, but, you know, the 200 to 600, you can kind of see how you could kind of adjust it to the situation. So again, the ton of cooling is left over. That terminology is left over from back in the early days of figuring all this stuff out, uh, and that's how they actually figured it out. Was they related it to things they could they could measure, and one of them would be how long it takes the amount of energy that you get from from the process of ice becoming water.
Today's ARE Live episode is an extension of our online ARE curriculum that you can find on blackspectacles.com, the home of online learning for architecture and design. If you need to prepare for the ARE, which I assume many of you guys do, and if you're looking for a good way to study for the exam that's more flexible and easier to digest than the traditional exam prep materials, then head over to blackspectacles.com to try out any of our free ARE video tutorials that are taught by tonight's presenter, Mike Newman. As an attendee, and as you can see here on the screen here, we have a couple of notes or information for today's episode. Any Anyone who is attending today's session, you're eligible to use this coupon code worth 15% off the first charge on your individual membership. If you're one of those folks who would like for your firm to purchase Black Spectacles access for you and your colleagues, just visit blackspectacles.com slash business, which is this fourth link here, and we'll send all the information for your firm to get set up. And also from now until the 15th of next month, firm memberships are 15% off if you mention this episode when you submit your form through blackspectacles.com slash business. Also on this, you'll see that our next webinar will be on May 27th with Mike at six o'clock. So if you'd like to register for it, here's the registration link. We're still firming up the details and the actual topic. So if you have any suggestions and would like Mike to cover a specific topic or would like us to interview someone in particular about a specific topic, please let us know. 